It's back to the powerful and the powerless. The powerless is where the internet people dwell, and the powerful are the ones who are getting interviewed by the mainstream media. Go ahead, Michael. Okay, well, my only sensitivity had to do with uh, my personal relationship, my personal respect for Jeff Rents. And it, I, it, it looks incredibly inflammatory. And I, I'm sure there are people who just they go to the site, they cannot believe, they cannot know how any reasonable person could post a graphic that says that Hitler was fucking free. Yeah, or well, saying that he wasn't such a bad guy. As an official columnist for Jeff Renz, I can say right now, Jeff, I think that you made a mistake when you posted that. Yeah. Okay, with that guy, a guy named, uh, I think his name is David Dees, he does some remarkable illustrations. Remarkable that illustrations, yes. Spectacular. But when he submitted that to Jeff Renz's site, I think Jeff should have said, you know what, no thanks. I think right. this goes a little bit too far. But the real, the real reason for that I'm not, I'm not worried that that graphic is going to incite hatred against Jews or that graphic puts Jews at risk. The real problem is that we need the alternative media to conduct itself at the highest possible level. Sure. Because, because of the relentless vacuity and debasement of the mainstream media. Well, one of the, just to give you an example here, I interviewed Tom Metzger on my show. Wow. You know who Tom Metzger is, Turner, by the way? Turner Diary, okay. Yeah. Tom Metzger ordered the death of an Ethiopian kid here in Oregon. He's the biggest white supremacist ever. Now, I called him an evil man to his face, and I and I and he didn't care because he was happy with who he was. He was good in his skin. I've had Rex Church on this program. He's a Satanist. I don't condone Satanist views, but it's nice to hear that you know you're nice to hear a viewpoint from someone else on the other side of the fence. Look. I don't care that Jeff Rents defends Zundel. I don't care that he defends right to free speech. But I really, really get a little uncomfortable when you're hearing from the mainstream media that they're coming after these people who are promoting hatred, and then they basically wave their asses in front and say, okay, go ahead and give me a slap on the ass. We'll see how, you know. It's like, I wouldn't want to, this would be frank, I wouldn't want to go with a group of black guys, jump in the middle of them and call them all niggers. I wouldn't want to do that. And that's what I think is the equivalent of. I think it's the equivalent of putting yourself in a group of black people and basically call them on and say, okay, porch monkey, tell me what's going on with your life. I think that this is the equivalency. And I think that, I think that it just needs to be called out. What do you think? If I can hop in. On my bus ride here, I sat next to a guy and I caught a glimpse of the tattoo that was on the back of his neck and it said 100% white. And if I were a more, oh conf if I were a more confrontational person, I would have said, well, can, you know, can you prove that? Probably not, but I didn't want to get beat up. <laughs> what hits me though is that some of these things that we're talking about is when people say, if people just have to walk in the room, they're gonna hear us kind of talking about talking shop, talking about these sort of inside, infighting things that ultimately for me, and what I try and do with the site, why I ultimately really never link to rents.com. If I can't get people to even realize that our money comes from the Federal Reserve or that they're planning to either microchip your money or you, or that our water is poison, or that they're practicing to take over our cities. If you can't even get people to that point, when you start hitting people with Cyclone B and Chupacabras and all these other things, it's just like, you know, I, I, I essentially use my, my Facebook page as to send out the feeds for my website. So I have tons of friends from the East Coast, which is where I'm from, and they're seeing some of these things and they instantly want to seize up and oh, sure. you've gone down the hole. Look, I don't lead with my moon hoax theories, okay? That's not something <laughs> I do, okay? Even though people rip me about it, I don't lead with it. I'm not going to say, oh, by the way, 9-11 was an inside, uh, you know. Uh, we need the alternative media to conduct itself at the highest possible level. Sure. Because, because of the relentless vacuity and debasement of the mainstream media. Well, one of the, just to give you an example here, I interviewed Tom Metzger on my show. You wow. know who Tom Metzger is, Turner, by the way? Turner Diary, kid. Yeah. Tom Metzger ordered the death of an Ethiopian kid here in Oregon. He's the biggest white supremacist ever. Now, I called him an evil man to his face, and, I, and, I, and he didn't care because he was happy with who he was. He was good in his skin. I've had Rex Church on this program. He's a Satanist. I don't condone Satanist views, but it's nice to hear that, you know, you're nice to hear a viewpoint from someone else on the other side of the fence. 
Look, I don't care that Jeff Rents defends Zundel. I don't care that he defends right to free speech. But I really, really get a little uncomfortable when you're hearing from the mainstream media that they're coming after these people who are promoting hatred, and then they basically wave their asses in front and say, okay, go ahead and give me a slap on the ass. We'll see how, you know. It's like, I wouldn't want to, this would be frank, I wouldn't want to go with a group of black guys, jump in the middle of them and call them all niggers. I wouldn't want to do that. And that's what I think is the equivalent of. I think it's the equivalent of putting yourself in a group of black people and basically calling them on and saying, okay, porch monkey, tell me what's going on with your life. I think that this is the equivalency. And I think that, I think that it just needs to be called out. What do you think? If I can hop in. On my bus ride here, I sat next to a guy and I caught a glimpse of the tattoo that was on the back of his neck and it said 100% white. And if I were a oh more, if I were a more confrontational person, I would have said, well, can, you know, can you prove that? Probably not, but I didn't want to get beat up. <laughs> what hits me though is that some of these things that we're talking about is when people say, if people just have to walk in the room, they're gonna hear us kind of talking about talking shop, talking about these sort of inside, infighting things that ultimately for me, and what I try and do with the site, why I ultimately really never link to rents.com. If I can't get people to even realize that our money comes from the Federal Reserve or that they're planning to either microchip your money or you, or that our water is poison, or that they're practicing to take over our cities. If you can't even get people to that point, when you start hitting people with Cyclone B and Chupacabras and all these other things, it's just like, you know, I, I, I essentially use my, my Facebook page as to send out the feeds from my website. So I have tons of friends from the East Coast, which is where I'm from, and they're seeing some of these things and they instantly want to seize up and oh, sure. you've gone down the hole. Look, I don't lead with my moon hoax theories, okay? That's not something <laughs> I do, okay? Even though people have written me about it, I don't lead with it. I'm not going to say, oh, by the way, 9-11 was an inside job, uh, you know, uh, Barack Obama's not an American, I sit, uh, naturalized citizen, and I don't think we land on the moon in 69. Oh, what a fucking crank. I mean, I'll get that, and I know I will, but I'm not, you know, that's the problem. Don't lead with those things. Get, you know, bring them in and then tell them what you think. Go ahead. Yeah, comments from the gentleman. Did you hear about uh, the investigations into the U.S. military as a training ground for white supremacists? Did you see that uh, article stuff that there were... Um, I, I don't know if I've seen that specifically, but we, we know the idea. All. Yeah, the idea is that um, there's a higher rate of uh, white supremacists using the U.S. military training right now to learn how to make bombs and all this kind of stuff, and that there have actually been dismissals of cases where investigations have started, and, you know, is this a tried and true white supremacist who has actually joined the, the Marines for this purpose, special forces for this well, purpose? I'm sure there are a lot of people that go in and do that. In fact, we're talking about people who go abroad, learn how to be terrorists, and come back. I think that, the, like I said, the new focus is on the extremists. They would say, well, extremists now will be your terrorists, not some guy from the Middle East. It'll be the extremists that will do it. Go ahead. Uh, just a quick suggestion. I'd like to invite people who uh, want to speak to come over to this microphone. It'll be easier for the host to see you tonight. So. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Who's next? You. I'd like to make a point about the mainstream media and how their conduct actually lends a false credibility to the white supremacists. And that, I think, is a major reason why, it's my perception that the number of white supremacist websites, the number of young people who are receptive to white supremacist ideals has increased. Okay, it's like the Los Angeles Times, I believe it is still their policy that if a black person commits a racial or hate crime, that they will actually intentionally suppress the race of the perpetrator. Now, this is the kind of news that gets bantied about on these various alternative sites and when I hear about, about that, you know what, it really is. That is a wrong policy, I think, for the Los Angeles Times. Sure, it, it really is. is. All they are doing is they are lending this ammunition and this false credibility to people who don't fucking deserve it. Sure, and, it's, and it goes back to once again saying that the internet is there for people who don't get the true story. Dan rather said that the media is failing in its, in its reporting. Even the BBC has said they're failing in its reporting. And the reason why is because they are focusing on the powerful and not the real people. And, and they're out of touch. Okay? 
So yes, I agree that the media is shot to hell. I don't agree that we have government intervention because that would then say, well, why stop at the media? We can go to the independent media and take that over too. We don't want to see that happen.